Hallelujah, church. God bless you for tuning in to the PIWC Worcester live service. Today is the Lord's Supper, and we just want to pray for you that you get an encounter with the Holy Spirit on this awesome day. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Say, you are worthy of all praise. Oh, you are worthy of all praise. Say, you are worthy.
to lift the name of this God, this great God who has given us life, who's given up himself so that we could live in this earth, God. We worship your holy name, God. We give you the glory, the adoration. You are holy, holy, you are holy. You are holy, holy, you are holy. Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy, holy, you are 
God, the only holy God, the only one who can sit on the throne and be God. Lord, we worship you again, God. We continue to give you glory. Lord, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, Jesus. At the right hand of the Father, no one is like you. Rama suri aba suri aba indele. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba. Rama suri aba indele. 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 Rama suri aba. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba. Rama suri aba indele. Rama suri aba. Lama Siri Abba 
Jesus, we worship you, God. We give you the glory, God. We give you the glory, God. No one is before you. No one is after you, God. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega, God. You are like unto your name, God. No one can compare to you, God. The redeemed one, God. We worship you, God. The redeemer, the redeemer, God. We give you the glory. We give you the adoration, God. Because there is no one that can compare, God. No one is like you, God. No one can compare to your strength, God. To your power, God. To your love, God. No one can compare, God. No one can compare, God. We give you glory. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. We give you glory, God. ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he when he God we worship you we give you all of the glory God we give you all of the praise God Lord there's no one that can compare to you God and there's no one is like unto your name God you are the only one who was able to redeem us from ourselves God the only one who was able to come give yourself so that we could have life God who is like you who is the express image, God, of you, God. Lord, we worship you, God. You are the light of this world. God, you've made us the light in this world. God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise for giving of yourself, for giving of yourself, God, for giving everything that you had so that we could be who we are today, God, we worship you. You've purged us of every sin, every iniquity, God, that could keep us, Lord. God, we worship you. We give you all praise, all glory, and all adoration, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Awesome God, how great the world. You are God, mighty are your miracles, we stand in awe of your holy name, Lord we bow. Continue 
us sing into the glory of God. Awesome God. Awesome God. How great you are. You are God. You are God. And mighty eyes of me. We stand in awe. Yes, we bow, yes, we bow, yes, we bow and worship you. Lord, we bow and worship you. Yes, we bow. the name of the Lord somebody handle the boss say cabranda labra le mando si andere le le bro si cabranda le le mando di mayande sabayanda la bro si andere we are in you Jesus we are in you Jesus we are in you Jesus handere bo si candere bro si handere be we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Handele bossi, handele be. Randa la bossu, tere bere, handa la bossu, tere be. I have heard your cry. I have heard your cry. I have heard your cry. And I'm letting you know today that there is a new dawn. And there is a new day. There is a new beginning. Hold that fast. Stand planted firmly in my word, for I have heard your cry, and I am bringing onto you a new dawn and a new day. Hold on tight to my word. Hold on tight to my word. Do not waver, for there is a new dawn coming, a new day, a brighter day. A brighter day, a brighter day is upon you and you shall rest and you shall breathe. Hold steadfast onto my word. I never left you and I will not leave you now. Lord, we bow. And worship you, Ooh, Lord, we bow and worship. Feels like just worshiping all day throughout this service, just worshiping all day throughout this service. It's a new month. Taking on another trajectory to the rest of the year, the seventh month of the year. Lord, we bow and worship. We worship, we worship, we worship. Lord, we bow, we bow and worship. Hey, you are God, you are God, we bow and Lamb of God, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy. Holy you are holy. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you are seated How the right hand of the Father. You are holy, you are holy. Oh, holy you are Somebody let time he's the last 
Receive all the worship, O oh God. Receive all the adoration, mighty God. For you deserve all our worship. Taking us through the first six months of this year. Through all the turmoil and the hardship. You kept us. You're still holy, sovereign seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us and ushering us, O oh God, into the second half of the year. We say receive all glory. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We worship you for who you are and for what you're able to do in the midst of your people. Have your way in our midst this morning and have all glory and dominion and power. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Oh, Father, we bless you. We thank you. Praise the Lord, church. And happy 4th. I know we celebrated the 4th yesterday. Some of you had some good time. Uh, we bless the Lord for what he's doing even in this nation. In the midst of all the chaos, God is still sovereign. And he's still doing what he says he would do. And so I hope you took some time to pray for this country. And even to pray for the nations of the world. That the purposes of God will be made manifest even in our midst. So this morning, it is a special Sunday for two reasons. This is the first Sunday of the seventh month of the year. What it means is we have crossed over to the second half of 2020. And not only that, secondly, the Lord has prepared a table for you and I to dine with him, to edify our spirits and our souls and our minds, to propel us even to the next half of this year. And so I pray that even as you listen to me and you participate in this morning service, your spirit will be charged and revived. Uh, looking forward for some greater things in the second half of this year. Because in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being and this great God will take us successfully through this rest of the year and all that he said he would do in our lives, in the church, in this country, in this nation. He will surely do it even to the glory of his holy name in Jesus' name. This morning we just want to listen to the word of the Lord and afterwards we will dine with him. For the past couple of months we have been engaging ourselves with a series of standing properly armed we were blessed last Sunday if you joined us uh, to understand that God has given us a helmet of salvation, that which makes us who we are. In other words, it defines our identity, and therefore, by virtue of that, it gives us authority. If I am saved, if I'm redeemed, if I have been transformed, then I'm not my old self. I am not a defeatist. I am now born into the kingdom of God with power and victory. And therefore, he changes my mindset, he changes my identity, and he gives me authority. I pray that you were blessed last week. This morning, we want to continue with the next weapon. Now, if you've been following us through the whole series, you realize that Paul was reminding you and I that we are in a spiritual warfare, a spiritual battle. So things may look the way they are on the physical, but there is something happening in the spiritual realms that as believers, we need to be cognizant of that fact and begin to rise and war against principalities and powers that are pushing things behind the scenes to push the agenda of the evil one. But we thank God that you and I have been called as soldiers of the cross, armed properly to do battle in the spiritual realms. I want to take the scripture reading from Ephesians chapter 6. Just so that we all get on the same page. Reading from verse 14 to 18. Ephesians 6, 14 to 18. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shut your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
Verse 16 says, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, you want to recognize that in verse 16 to verse 17, he changes the instruction and says, take. And we'll talk about that in a minute in today's message. Taking on the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation, which we talked about last week, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That is what we're dwelling on today. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Again, in a typical Paul analogy, he was describing a Roman soldier at war. And so we've gone through all the weapons this morning. He's telling us another weapon. Now, you realize that of every weapon that he describes, this happens to be the only offensive weapon, if you will. All of them were more protective, defensive weapons. But when it comes to this weapon, he says, take the sword of the Spirit because it is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. Now, the premise of his analogy is based on a couple of things. And we just want to go through that even as we draw in some great rima from it. The premise of Paul saying or comparing the word of God, if you will, to the sword of the spirit is based on the fact that in warfare, some enemies are closer than others. Let me repeat that again. In a spiritual battle, some enemies are more closer to you than others. And amazingly, because they are closer to you, the magnitude of their attack also is stronger and dangerous. Now, if a person is far and he throws an arrow or he shoots, let me put it that way, the velocity of it versus the person who stands close to you and shoots are different. The one that is closer to you have a higher impact. And therefore, the attack of a close enemy is powerful and dangerous. Number three. The closer the enemy is, the stronger the attack. <laughs> One time in Florida, the Lord gave me a message on close enemies. Not close friends, but close enemies. The closer the enemy, the stronger the attack. Which means that such battle is involved with close combat. Now, the word grappling comes to mind. Grappling with something. It is just there. You turn left, it's there. You turn right, it's there. You turn around, it's there. The Spirit of God tells you, recalculate it. You turn and it's there. You have no chance to go to the next level but to grapple with it. You have to have a close engagement because that enemy is close. It's all over you. Constantly. You turn on the TV, it's there. You go to the marketplaces, you go to campuses, it's just so close. And therefore, Paul is making this analogy based on that premise. And if a person were to have a grappling, a close combat, then you don't need a javelin, you don't need a long sword. What he was referring to as a sword of the spirit is actually a small, short sword. A dagger, if you will. A dagger. That which you have constantly on you. It is on you, conveniently located on you. So that when the enemy is close, you don't need that long sword, you don't need that javelin. You have a dagger in which you can do close combat, grappling with the enemy. This morning we are praying in the name of Jesus as we go through these teachings that God will reveal to us that as you sit as a believer, you have the sword of the spirit on you. And every close enemy that encounters you, you have been given the power and the ability to overcome as long as you would engage in that battle. We pray that that will be the revelation for you even in the name of Jesus. What it also means, therefore, if this is a short sword, a dagger, and it requires grappling, it requires close combat, then it also requires some level of skill. It is easy when you have a long sword and you can swing it back and forth just to sometimes even scare the enemy away. But it is a whole different ball game when the enemy is close to you and all you have is a kitchen knife. And you got to have to be able to maneuver how to use a kitchen knife to defeat the enemy. 
Now, a couple of weeks ago, my wife was in the kitchen. I went and just kind of looked at her. I haven't done that in a while, maybe subconsciously. But I watched how she was, you know, really cutting the onions and the tomatoes. And, ta -ta 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 -ta. and I looked and I'm like, oh, my goodness. I have not realized this in a long time. My wife's got skills. Mad skills when it comes to cutting tomatoes and onions. Hallelujah. Thank God for our wives. I bet you if I were to try, if grace don't come my way, I'd probably cut my fingers off. It requires skill. That means that a soldier who means to have victory, a soldier who determines in his or her heart to have victory over this close enemy requires some level of skill. Number two, it is designed conveniently, as I said, to be carried wherever you go. It's not a huge armor. It's not a long sword where you put it in your home. You go to your school, you carry it. You go to work, you carry it. You go to grocery, you carry it. At home, it's on you. That is what it's meant to do. The other day I was telling a friend, oh boy, I wish somebody would have advised the president that we don't hold the sword of the spirit like this, but we keep it on our side wherever we go. Wherever we go. It is not for show. It is to be indwelling. Wherever you go, it's on you. It's on you. Hallelujah. Like the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. You realize that? He says, the sword of the spirit must all be taken. Take it. Take it. It's an active word. Take it. Let it be by you wherever you go. Now, I want to go through that word take. That, 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 that word take. Because it means two things in this context. Bear with me here. So, take as in have it. Take it. Receive it, accept it, perhaps imbibe it, right? Believe it, take it. So an example is take God at his word. You believe, you take it, you soak it in. That is one use of the word take. And so the sword of the spirit is meant to be taken, received, believed, accepted. Number two, the use of take as in use it, apply it, activate it. You first suck it in, it sits in your spirit, and then you are able to take it and use it also as a weapon. I am praying this morning, hallelujah, because some of you would have the sword of the spirit, and two things can happen. You haven't believed it. You haven't accepted it. You haven't not taken it in. Or you have believed it, you've accepted it, but it's just lying down, and you are not taking it as a weapon. We pray that the two elements of this will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Take it. Oh, hallelujah. He says, and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If I'm to take it, and it says it is the spirit sword, and it represents the word of God. There are a few things that I want to break down here. One, it means that the Holy Spirit has a sword. The sword belongs to the Holy Spirit. If I'm going to engage in a spiritual realms, I need spiritual weapons. And Paul is telling us that we have a spirit and that spirit has a weapon. And his weapon in this context is a sword. Number two, the sword is the word of God, as it says. Take the word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the Holy Spirit has a sword. That sword is the word of God. Number three, the sword is of the spirit, of the spirit. What it means, therefore, is as the word is also of the spirit, that spirit reveals the word. That spirit qualifies the word. That spirit makes the word manifest. What that also means is you can have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. But because your spirit mind cannot take it, understand it, receive it, because your spirit mind cannot perceive the use of it, it would just be like a philosophy book sitting on the desk. It could just be a reference book sitting on the desk. It could be just a bunch of fonts on your iPad. And you may read it just as it is, but it carries no power. I hope you are with me so far. Because we're talking about a word. Of God, the Spirit's sword. Now, I was playing with words this morning. <laughs> and, and, and it's amazing how the Spirit of God drops some of these playful things in your, in your heart. Now, 
The word sword is spelled S-W-O-R-D. And then as I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, wow. If I were to just play around it, it could be S-word, right? S-W-O-R-D. If it's S-word, then I can just also abbreviate it says it is a spiritual word. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you are with me. So sword, S-W-O-R-D, in itself, in its makeup, contains spirit. And so Jesus makes a very profound statement in John 6, 63 to 64. It says, it is the spirit which gives life. The flesh profits nada, zip. These words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And then he makes a very sad statement, but there are some of you who don't believe it. There are many of us who don't believe it. Though it is spirit, though it gives life, many don't believe. The question is, why can't they believe? Why aren't they able to believe? Answer, let's read quickly. Romans 8, 5 to 6. We read this last week with Helmut of Salvation. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Back up. What did Jesus say? These words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Note that the word can only become a sword if you, one, accept it. And you do so by a couple of things. You read it with a spiritual eye. You hear it with a spiritual ear. You receive it with a spiritual heart. You understand it with a spiritual mind. In other words, if your mindset is carnal, if your eye is carnal, if your ear is seared with carnality, they may be words all right, but it would not be the spiritual word. I am praying for divine revelation this morning. That as Christians, it doesn't become a cliche as we quoting scriptures, memorizing scriptures, uh, writing that on, on, you know, maybe a sticker on our car, uh, uh, probably even having some bracelets that have some scriptural readings on it, but has no substance. The connection is zip because our mindset is so carnal our ears are seared with carnality. Our eyes only perceive carnal stuff. Our hearts are filled with carnality. If that is who we are, then we may have the spirit, the sword of the spirit, but it does not become active because we can't even relate to it. That is what this morning the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you. Those whose minds are filled with carnality cannot understand the things of the spirit. And if the word of God is the sword of the spirit, then a soldier who wants to be able to use that sword must operate in the spirit. Tell your sister, your brother, your wife, your husband, operate in the spirit. Oh, tell him again, operate in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you want to win a battle in the spiritual realms? You need a spiritual sword. You need it. Not only do you need a spiritual sword, you also need to know how to use it. And thank God for the Holy Spirit. Since the sword is spiritual, the owner of that sword is also spiritual. And if I want to learn how to do battle in a spiritual realm, I need a spiritual teacher. I need a spiritual mentor. I need a spiritual general who has been to war many times and won and can tell me how things are in the spiritual realms. One, two, tell me the weapon that I have, in this case, the word of God, and how to use it, properly utilize it. Join me, John 14, 25 to 26. John, Gospel of John 14, 25, 26. Jesus about to leave, right? Telling us, of course, by virtue of his disciples. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things that I have said to you. Now, think, think, take your spiritual helmet on for a minute. Jesus, the word, 
is telling us that I'm leaving. And I perceive that you may probably be a little bit forgetful about me being the word. But chill, don't worry. I am sending the Holy Spirit. He is the spiritual teacher. When he comes, he will teach you all things and bring into remembrance the stuff that I've told you that you may forget. This morning, you need a spiritual teacher. Thank God he's already in here. All you got to do is allow him and say, teacher, teach me. Teach me. John 16, 12 to 14. John, gospel, same John, 16, 12 to 14. Jesus still speaking. He says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Ooh. Ooh. I got stuff to tell you. I got some deep things to reveal to you. There are some really good stuff that you need to know. But at this moment, you may not be able to take it in. You may not be able to receive it yet. You may not be able to comprehend it yet. But guess what? 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into the truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me for he will take that which is of mine and declare to you. Did, did you catch that? The spirit takes the word and reveals it to us. He will take that which is of Christ and make it revealed to us, manifested to us. Now, when I read that, it, it brought back to a new understanding of what John was talking about, right? John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You jump to verse 14, it says, and the Word became flesh, and then it found its dwelling amongst men. And then you ask, how did the Word became flesh? That which was spirit became flesh and made a dwelling in man. It's the same question Mary asked. How can this be? You're telling me that God, in this case, of course, you probably didn't know that God is Jesus and Jesus is the word. But you're telling me in this context, the word is going to manifest in flesh and dwell in me. How can it be? And the angel says, oh, Mary, don't worry. The Holy Spirit, the teacher, would come upon you. And the power of the Almighty would overshadow you. When that happens, that which seems bleak, seems so obscure, will become clear. The manifestation of the word becoming flesh will come to pass. Why? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Church, the Spirit of God living in you is supposed to teach us. Bring deeper revelations of the word. But some of you have not even given him a chance. Because as we read last week, some have not put on the helmet of salvation. Our minds have not been renewed yet. And you cannot fathom spiritual things with carnal mind. You cannot see spiritual things with carnal eyes. You cannot hear spiritual things with carnal ear. And guess what? The fact of the matter is that word is a sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. What then is this word? What is this word that I'm talking about? To a believer. Let's go through this quickly, even as we hammer it home. This whole thing could be a whole month's teaching. And as I was praying, the Lord says, just break these things down so that we can get some understanding. What then it is? Pastor, you said this is this. It's manifested in the flesh. I need the Holy Spirit to teach me. Let's say all those happens. What then? What benefit do I get as a believer? Number one, we're running through this quickly. If the Spirit of God reveals the Word of God to you, being a weapon for you as a believer, one thing it does, number one, it reveals the intent and the mind of God. Look, words are like mirrors. Mirrors of one's soul. As a man speaks, so he is. Sitting by your husband, sitting by your wife. Evaluate what he says to you. Evaluate what she says to you. As he or she speaks, you better believe that's who she is. That's who he is. Unless, of course, he's faking. So, Scripture is saying that the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, it reveals the intent 
and the mind of God. In other words, if God speaks, he's revealing his mind to us. He's revealing his intent, his intentions, his plan to us. And it's the Holy Spirit that interprets it. That a believer would have a better understanding. First Corinthians 2, 9, 4. Just paraphrasing, right? No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, right? What God has prepared for those who love him. Yet, he has revealed it through his spirit. And then he goes on towards the bottom and says, Who knows the mind of a man unless the spirit in the same manner, who knows the mind of God except the Spirit of God? And therefore, if the Spirit of God, who is carrying the sword, the word of the Spirit, reveals to us who God is, the believer becomes powerful. You know the intent of God. You know the mind of God. You know what he plans to do according to his will. You don't move anyhow because you know the purposes of God concerning your life. Number two, it is a healer of our souls. It is a healer of our souls. Hebrews 4.12, let's read that together. Hebrews 4.12, I call it the master surgeon. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God, which is a sword of the spirit, the dagger of the spirit, the scapular of the spirit, is living and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. What does it do? It pierces even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrows. And it is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Boy, you want spiritual surgery? Read the word. Read the word. It will convict you. See, when you are sick, they put you in a cat scan. The doctors will figure out what's going on with you. They do tests. They do all this. There's no machine that has been created that can scan the soul. Except the word of God. The word of God. It convicts your heart of what is wrong within. Not only that, but it says it cuts through it, performs surgery. By the time you're done reading it, you are relieved. It purifies you. He's a healer of our souls. The master surgeon. Oh, somebody love the word. Love the word. Hallelujah. Number three, it is our spiritual GPS. Boy, Psalm 119 verse 9. How can a young man, paraphrasing, keep his life straight? And then he answered, by taking your word. And then he says, your word have I hid in my heart so I will not mess up against you. That I will not miss my path. I will not miss my purpose. And then when you go all the way to 105, it says, that word is a lamp unto my feet and is a light unto my path. It is your spiritual GPS. And I'm not talking about only young men and women. Every believer, as you read the word, as you get a better, clearer, deeper understanding by allowing the Holy Spirit, the teacher, to teach you, you will not miss your path. Even when you miss it, you see, the GPS says recalculating, recalculating. It will just recalculate you back on track. Love the word. Number five, it is food for our spiritual growth. If you're a Christian and you don't love the word, it's just like a baby who doesn't eat. Guess what? There's a term for it. Or probably you don't eat well. You are malnourished. It's called kosher call. The nutrients that you're supposed to get so that you can build some great muscles, your brain development is great, your height is going up, you don't. And therefore, you are stagnant in your growth. But as you imbibe the word, as you take the word, receive it, let it soak within you. It says what? It is food for your spiritual growth. First Peter 2, 2, right? As newborn babies, what does it say? Desire the pure milk of the word. The calcium of the word, if you will. The vitamin D of the word. All the nutrients of the word so that you would grow thereby. How I pray that we will fall in love with this food, which is also the sword of the spirit. And lastly, what is the word? The word is Christ. Oh, tell your sister, your brother, the word is Christ. And so when he says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, what he's saying is put on Christ. 
take Christ. Wherever you go, let Christ be seen in you. Let the beauty of Christ be seen in you. Let the manifestations of Christ be seen in you. Why? Because you are soaked with the word. You carry the sword of the spirit. The enemy can come close and close as he was, but he's got nothing on you because you are soaked. See how Jesus dealt with it? He says, it is written. It is written. He himself was the word. And therefore the enemy could not overcome and overtake him. That is the authority that we have. That is the power we have in the word. How I pray that even as you listen to me, the Holy Spirit will reveal in a much deeper way to you. So that you know that those whose mind are carnal don't get spiritual things. For that matter, they cannot engage in spiritual battle. Those who mind, whose minds are spiritually focused, they understand the things in the spirit. Therefore, they yearn for the things of the spirit. They want to win the battle in the spirit realm. The way to do that, the Bible says, take the sword of the spirit. So that as you battle in the spiritual realm, you are blowing this word. You are Proclaiming this word. You are decreeing and declaring this word. You are allowing this word to work on you. Work on you. Change you and transform you. Even in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as I wrap up. And it's amazing how God confirms his word. Hebrews 1. 1 to 4. That's the scripture that our sister used for worship today. And I was just sitting there and yelling in my spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hebrews 1. Take your scriptures. Read with me. Read with me. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in the past to our fathers and by the prophets, has in these last days, boy, right here, these last days, our days, our generation, spoken to us by who? His son. Who is his son? The word. What is the word? The sword of the spirit. Whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. In other words, that word created everything we see. Who being in the brightness of his glory, the word is the brightness of God's glory, and the express image of his son, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Oh, how I wish we could break this down. But let's go on. When he had himself purged our sins this morning, when he has himself purged all our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he, by inheritance, has obtained a more excellent name than they. That is a word. Becoming flesh, taking upon the sins of mankind, Dying on the cross to save you and I. And this morning he has laid a table before us in remembrance of the act on the cross. Church, it is the word. The sword of the spirit. You want to win battle in the spiritual realm? Know the game of the spiritual realm. Know the rules of the spiritual realm. How do you get to do that? By knowing the word. So take the sword of the spirit and begin to do all your close combat battles. That which is all around you, that which is within you, that which is in your mind. Sometimes you want to let go, it comes back. Sometimes you want to run away, it comes back. You don't need to run from the enemy. You have the ammunition to fight. And that is the word of God, the sword of the spirit. May the Lord bless you. May he bring illumination. May he bring deeper revelation. That as the next time you pick your word, the next time you carry your sword, you know what it's, it is. You know how to use it. You know how to maneuver your way around this battle. And surely and surely, victory will come. Even to the glory of the Father. Somebody begin to open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Just begin to open your mouth and bless Jesus for his word. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mando, Sutole, Bele, 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 Bosi. 
Randa la baba sotele bele bele hando lo bos. Rabata yande le bos ya. Mande le bos itele bele bele bos. Thank you for your word, oh God. Thank you for your word, Jesus. Masa brundele bele 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 bos. Manda bo re kabas itele bele bele bele. Rabba sandoli kabranda la brasu. Le basa yande bele 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 bos. Mando ni masi hande de bere 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 be rapata se kabrando si hande de bere be rande de mosu to de bere 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 be rande le mosi tabranda ramama yande de bosi rapata yanda la masu te de bere bere be shabo ni masande de bere 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 bos mando ni mainde ri hande de bere bere be sapa so kaba ande le be su te de be handa bra in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, our first prayer this morning, we want to pray for God to reveal himself anew to us. Scripture recalls Saul, who later became Paul, had zeal, had passion, but he was blinded spiritually. And so all his ways were contrary to the purposes of God until scales were removed from his eyes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now he began to see clearly. We pray the Father as we pick your word, may we have a deeper meaning and understanding. Not only that, but may its power penetrate through us and bring revelation. Not opinions, not commentaries, but deep revelations. Somebody begin to open your mouth and pray for that. Rabata le masabori ba librando si hande masse cabrondo de grantas o god deeper revelation open the eyes open our minds open our hearts open our ears may we hear and know you more rabato si telebele bele bos mandele bos si telebele bos rabato si kandelebele bos Mando riba katayan delebos riba so tini biri handelelele mando riba su tole bele bele be raba tasan delebos si handele raba yando ri mahando ri reke beri maso tole bele bele be shabo si tole bele bele be mando riba handele in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray that may the Spirit of God teach us how to battle spiritually with a sword of the Spirit. Remember, the word says that it is a close contact battle. To hold a, chicken, a, a, a kitchen knife as opposed to a long sword and still be able to win the battle, it takes some skill. Thank God, Jesus says, that Spirit of truth, that coach, that teacher, that professor, that general who has done battle in the spirit will teach us our hand so that we know how to hold the sword of the spirit to do battle. We are praying, oh God, if we have been misapplying your word, if we have been misapplying the usage of your sword, bring us back home, sit us down, ground us, and teach us how to do battle in a spiritual realm. Open your mouth and begin to pray, somebody. Rabato, sitele bele bele bos, mandele bo, rikabande de bos ya, rekebe, ramata sundele bele bos, rababa, lekebe, rimahandele, sabro, rihandosi, mato, sikabrande le le le, in the name of Jesus, 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 Mando di Basaya de Lebebe, Rabo Sitele Bebebe, Sando de Behande de Bebebe, Mande de Bo Sitabra, Rabba Basende de Bos, Rama Mahande de Lele, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We just want to take two more prayers and then we'll usher ourselves into dining with the Lord. Number one, we're praying for this country. We're lifting the United States of America onto the throne of grace. That's where you and I live, right here, right here. So whatever is going on, if you're a soldier of the cross and you just sit aloof, unconcerned, then I don't know what to tell you. 
when you have such weapons at your disposal. We are lifting up this country unto the Lord. That in the midst of the chaos, may the glory of God be seen. Mm, in the midst of the confusion, may God show himself worthy. You know what? It takes the spirit to convince carnal minds, to convince hatred, to convince malice, so that they can know the truth. It's okay to protest. It's okay to speak up. It's okay to do all that. But I bet you it takes a change of mind and heart. And that only comes from the word of God. Penetrating through sinful men and transforming them. Once you and I were like that. But how come we are here now? The power of the sword of the spirit. We're lifting this nation unto God. Father, may you use us to be able to propagate your gospel. May the gospel penetrate hearts, change mindsets, change attitudes, break down cultures, break down barriers. And may your glory be seen in this nation. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Rabo, sitele barabosi. Mandelebo, ribata. Ribo, sutole bosi. Rabo, rihandele. Masutole barabarabos. Rika basi telebe. Ramato si telebosi. Mandele barabarabosi. Rabata yandele bele 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 bele. Use us, O oh God. Use us, O oh God. Use us, O oh God. To change your nation. Change this nation. Change this nation. Change this nation. Rabo si telebele bele bele bos. Mandele bele 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 bos ya. Rapapa le bakandos. We bless you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. This is our final prayer. As we take the turn to the next half of the year, many of us, the first half was not that exciting. As a matter of fact, all of us have experienced some sort of trauma, chaos. But as we usher ourselves by the grace of God to the next half of the year, we want to commit ourselves unto the Lord. Father, may your glory be made manifest in us. <laughs> uh, may what the canker worms have eaten, the locusts have eaten, may all that we have lost, by your grace, bring restoration. We pray that our mouths will now be full of praise and laughter. After we have suffered a while, your word says that you will prepare us, restore us, edify us. Because you want to show forth your glory in us. Let it come to pass. Even as we go through the second half of this year. Lift up a prayer somebody. Lift up a prayer. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Bring restoration. Take away all fear. Take away all fear. Take away all fear. May we walk in the boldness. Knowing, oh God, that you got our back. And you are working behind the scenes. Causing all things to work on our behalf. In the name of Jesus. 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 Ramatos. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. We honor you. Finally, even as we get ourselves prepared to dine with him, you may have listened to me, but you don't know this word that we're talking about. You don't have a relationship with him. I'm not talking about going to church. It's okay to come to church. I'm talking about having an intimate relationship where you know him deeply, spiritually, emotionally, personally. I'm talking about accepting this Jesus as your Lord, your master and savior. If you are in that boat, I just want to give you a chance. Just a simple prayer. With our hearts, we believe and take in this word. With our mouth, we proclaim unto salvation. If you want to do so, just say this after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I confess today that I am a sinner. I am ignorant to your word. I have no deep revelation of who you are. But I believe that because of that, you came to die on the cross. To bring me illumination. To bring me redemption. To be made justified. And to have a relationship with you. Therefore today, 
I accept you and I confess you as my Lord, as my master, and as my savior. Come into my life. I take you into my life. I receive you into my life. Help me, oh God, that I'll be able to know how to maneuver with the usage of the sword of your spirit, that that which you have said concerning my life will surely come to pass to the glory of your holy name. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are saved, brother. You are saved, sister. You are now part of this great army. Take that sword of the Spirit and begin to do battle because that's your mandate, even in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to see a number at the bottom of the screen if you need help with growth in your new found identity. We are here for you. Give us a call. We'll pray with you. We'll talk to you. And that purpose of God will come and will be made manifest, even in Jesus' name. Church, we are preparing ourselves to dine with the Lord at this moment. Wherever you are, I just want you to get into that mood. He says we should do this in remembrance of Him. That prize that was paid on Calvary is what we are witnessing today. This is it. It brings us new illumination, brings us new knowledge. It makes us know who we are in Him. Above all, it gives us power. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. That as we partake of your body and drink of your blood, may you infuse us with new strength, new vigor. May you propel us onto doing greater exploits for you. If we were weak the past six months, as we usher ourselves, oh God, and you usher us, as a matter of fact, into the next six months, grant us the capacity to be able to go through it successfully, that all glory and honor will be ascribed unto you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Even as I read before we do, get yourself prepared, get your emblems ready. Hebrews 1, 1 to 4, and I just read from the 3, verse 3. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he himself purged us of our sins, purged us forgave us of our sins now sits at the right hand of the majesty on high having become so much better than the angels he has received a better inheritance than them all that is who the Lord has made us to be as we partake of his body and his blood I pray that our revelation will be made manifest to you at this moment grab your emblems even as we do this in remembrance of him oh hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 at the cross I bow my knees. Where your blood was shed mm. for me. There's no greater love than this. At the cross, at the cross yes, I bow Lord, my Monday knees. Divorce, yeah. Where body of Christ may you go ahead and partake of this body that was broken for you and I this is the blood of Jesus the blood that was shed for the redemption of our sins may we go ahead and partake of the blood of Jesus so father we bless you for this privilege may you begin to work in us May you begin to activate yourself in us. 
May you cause us, O oh God, to do both to will and to do according to your good pleasures. May this next month, O oh God, be full of victories, full of revelations, because we have partaken of your body and of your blood. We bless you and we give you all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. on your screens you're going to see a few links where you'll be able to go and offer unto the Lord and may the Lord bless you and replenish you even as you do this good work hallelujah the lamp of God was slain he is worthy to be praised oh lamp of God we will praise your holy name the lamp of God is worthy to be praised. Oh, Lamp of God. Oh, Lamp of God. We will praise. We will praise your holy the name. Lamp of God. The Lamp of God was slain. He alone. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, Lamp of God. Oh, Lamp of God. We will praise. We will praise your holy the name. Lamp of God. The Lamp of God was slain. He is worthy. He is worthy. Oh Lamb of God, come on and praise your holy name. I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored. This is my day. This is my time. This is my moment. Thank you, Jesus. I am blessed. This is my moment. This is my moment. Thank you, 
circumstances. Hallelujah. I am only full by the word of God. circumstances we are only moved by the word of God we bless the Lord for today and for giving us the opportunity to come to you live via this platform uh, see you next week the same time if you've not been sharing please go ahead and share with your friends your colleagues your classmates we all want to be blessed even in these times and seasons few announcements and then we'll be out of here Sunday school starts right after this service so Parents, please gather your kids so that we can all join them even as we worship at the Sunday school service. On Wednesday, we have our throne room services from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Join us even as we pray and supplicate before him. On Friday, we have our encounter services. Please join us as well even as we worship together. Now, on every Wednesday evening, we have Walk in the Word where we delve deep into the Word have a family discussion, and then come out edified with a spirit being our teacher. Join us every Wednesday from 7 p.m. in Walk in the Word. However, this week, which is starting tomorrow all the way to the next Sunday, it is the National Youth Conference. We've dubbed it the Glory Conference. So starting from 6th of July all the way to the 12th of July. Now, a few explanations here. Just give me a few minutes. On Monday, the districts are going to have the Zoom services. So that will be had on all district levels. On Wednesday, our region will have our regional service starting at 7 p.m. And then the national service, if you will, or conference starts on Friday. So that is going to be a virtual church service. We stream in live on Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom. Join us even as we encourage these young and dynamic leaders of this church uh, to show forth what the Lord is using them to do. We will be blessed and they will be blessed as well. In addition, we want you to go register. Your youth and PENSA ministry leader at your local or your district would have to send you a link. Make sure you register because on Saturday we're going to be breaking out into some wonderful discussion periods. We don't want you to miss out. So definitely do that even as we all join our hands and worship this great God. I know you'll be blessed, so don't miss out. Invite your friends, your schoolmates, your colleagues, your graduate friends. Join us, even as we lift the name of the Lord high. It is Glory Conference. The theme is my image, God's glory manifested. My image, God's glory manifested. We know that his glory will be made manifest even throughout this week in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you for watching. God bless you for coming. And may you have a blessed week even in Jesus' name. Let's receive the benediction. Now may God, who is the word, continue to reveal himself to us deeply, intimately, so that we'll be able to walk according to his purpose, even in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the season to shine forth God's glory over the nations is here. The Youth and Penta Ministry of CLP USA is out on a move bringing to your homes our historic National Youth 
Glory Conference 2020. Date, July 10th to 12th. Venue, all social media platforms. Theme, my image, God's glory. Go ahead and subscribe to Youth Pensa USA. That is Y-O-U-T-H-P-E-N-S-A USA on all social media platforms. And more importantly, register for this life-changing event. You will be marvelously blessed by spirit-filled ministrations from anointed men and women of God. Catch you on the live stream. Thank <laughs> you.